What's going on guys? In this video we're going to find out whether or not the Chicago Blackhawks can win the AHL Calder Cup. Now they're one of the worst teams in the NHL right now. They're one point away from being tied for the worst with the Columbus Blue Jackets and the San Jose Sharks. The reason we're using the Blackhawks though, as you guys were to see, is because they're actually the lowest rated team in game. As you can see though, the Sharks are 84 overall, Blackhawks 81, making them the lowest rated. You can see even the Coyotes are 82 or above them. And like I mentioned, the Blue Jackets, they're also above them at 83 overall. Now even though they are the lowest rated NHL team, they're still much higher rated than any of the AHL teams. As you guys can see here, most of them are like in the low 70s. I believe the two highest rated teams there are both 75 overall. So like, you know, the Blackhawks would be the favorite here to win the Calder Cup, but doesn't mean anything's guaranteed. And now for this video, guys, I've actually had the salary cap turned off. That way we can actually send down all of our NHL players. Also, too, I've got the computer trades turned off just because with salary cap off, I don't want the computers making any, like, wonky trades they normally wouldn't make. All right, guys, so I just got finished swapping the two teams. If you guys don't know what the Chicago Blackhawks lineup has been looking like, it's not great. That's why we're doing this video. So, uh, first line there, you got Lucas Reichel is actually like a solid young player. He was actually tearing up the AHL but a point per game before he got called up. Uh, Jonathan Taze, I'm actually going to have him be on the team until January 28th. That was his last game played this season before he went out for the rest of the year. So, I feel like that's, you know, fair. It's realistic rather than keeping him out the whole time or leaving him in the whole time. Uh, he's actually playing with Tyler Johnson as well on that first line. They get a plus two. Second line there, it's already falling off quite a bit. Uh, Radish, Athanasiu, Kurashev. Third line, you got Dickinson, Blackwell, and Whistle. And then finally in the fourth line, we have Anderson, Kara, and Kachuk. And now defensively here, it's actually looking pretty good chemistry-wise at least. Uh, Seth Jones, Connor Murphy, top pair, get a plus five. You got Zaitsev, Jones on the second pairing. Tenority, Mitchell on the bottom pair. So obviously, the defense isn't great, but it's also like not terrible. Um, I'm sure there's other NHL teams with like similar defense that obviously are at the bottom of the standings as well. But like just that offense, just nothing really there. Especially when you take out Taze, like... I would argue their best player is probably Lucas Reichel right now, uh, more so than Athens C or Johnson, even though, of course, you know, they're kind of more established players. Goaltending wise, you got Mrazek and Soderblom. They're both, you know, fringe goalies, nothing really there. Uh, looking at the power play one, like, <laughs> come on. You got the earliest power play with, like, McDavid, Dry Saddle, and then you got this Blackhawks power play. Like, I don't know. Uh, power play two is even worse. Like, just a bunch of 70s. Uh, you guys are curious about the four mans there. Uh, PK wise will be good at the start when Taze is on it at least because he's got really good face offs, pretty good defensive stats. But uh, once he's gone, this team's going to definitely you know have a hard time. The good news is they're playing in the AHL, not the NHL. Um, otherwise, they'd have no chance. Speaking of the NHL team, guys, so obviously the AHL team is down in the NHL. Uh, you can see not the greatest looking team. Uh, we'll see just how terribly they do as well. Obviously, that's kind of like another second bonus part of this video. Uh, Stay like there's, I guess, a decent enough goalie at 78 overall. Now, this is kind of funny to me. Buddy Robinson was their preseason scoring leader. No offense to him. I've actually never heard of him. I guess he was like some AHL grinder. And they're 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. So, who knows? Imagine like this team somehow makes the playoff. But obviously, we're more worried about the AHL team, which is really the NHL team, trying to win this Calder Cup. So, I'll take you to the first game. We'll take a look at the rating. Just kind of give you guys an idea how much better they are than like the rest of the AHL teams. So as you guys look at the ratings, you can see they got 78 offense, 88 defense, 80 goal tending. So as I mentioned, their defense isn't that bad. Also, too, you can see Jonathan Taze there as a member of the Ice Hogs. I'm pretty sure he's actually never played for their AHL team. So this will be something new for him. And then compared here to the Manitoba Moose, 72, 77, 73. So yeah, like if they're the average AHL team, all in the mid 70s, we should have an advantage there. But with this game, you never know. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, so I just sent up to January 28th. It's now time to scratch Taze. Team's currently 27, 12, and 3, which probably first in the NHL. They got 57 points there. Um, taking a look. No, the Silver Knights have 68. Okay. Um, they're second in the NHL, though. It still isn't too bad. Taze averaging almost a point per game. Mostly in a playmaker, though. Just setting up the other guys. So uh, it does suck. Let me losing our lean scorer here. And now Taze scratch. Here's an update look at the team. We've got Reichel, Johnson, Athens, C on the first line. Get a plus two. You got Radish, Dickinson, Kershev on the second with a plus one. The bottom six is essentially the same. But look at this forward group. It's crazy to me to think where they were a year ago. Like, before they trade away. Debrinkit, Kirby Dog. Let Dylan Strom walk for nothing, which I still don't understand. Just signed a $5 million contract with the Capitals. They could have qualified and at least got some picks. Of course, trade away Patty Kane, trade away Max Domi. And like, this is what their team is looking like. If they don't get Connor Bedard, which odds are they're not going to get him, this team is going to be in for a tough, tough time rebuilding. Obviously, they do have some, you know, good prospects coming, like Borchinski, like Frank Nazar, but still, uh, the Blackhawks, not in a great place right now. Now, speaking of the NHL team in game here, let's take a look. Um, Hardman, there's our leading scorer. 22 points, 48 games. What's our record? 6, 38, and 4. 16 points. It'll be funny, too, actually, if we do win Bedard in the sim after I say that. We'll see what happens here uh, the rest of the season. And here we go, guys. Right there, the season now with a record of 53, 16, and 3. So, 
kind of as you'd expect. An NHL team playing in the AHL does pretty well. Finished the year there with 109 points, winning the league with the Henderson Silver Knights only four points back of us. We are going to have some competition here. Athens CU averaged over a point per game, so that's pretty nice to see. We got somebody who's at least, you know, playing well. Uh, behind him, Lucas Reichel, 64 is not terrible. He actually went up in rating by one, now an 80. Um, Tyler Johnson and Kershev, both 58. Seth Jones at 52, so we got five players there, 50 plus points. Blackwell was close. Radish as well, 45. Nikita Zaitsev, 39 is actually higher than I expected. Again, Taze was doing really good for us before uh, we had to scratch him for an injury. So taking a look at goalies here, Mrazic got slightly more starts, but had a worse save percentage and a slightly worse goals against. But in general, you can see our goalie numbers there were really good because, of course, they're playing behind great defense in terms of AHL. Um, NHL-wise, not quite the same story. Um, wow. Below 900 save percentage, above four goals against. Let's see here. Hardman, 35 points, tied with Sini. Yeah, this team, they had a tough go of it. Let's see, where's plus minus? Walensky there, minus 76. And check this out, guys. Looking at league scoring here, Marco Rossi actually had 80 points. Uh, he's only a 77, but he actually was able to put up more than that. This year was an 82. Um, Ace Amont there, 73. Kepka 71. Eklund, 69. Dennis Sanko. I mean, there are some pretty good players. Of course, Reichel is pretty high. So, yeah, we'll see what happens here. Defensive scoring, Seth Jones. Uh, he is on the top page, but Lucas Johansson, 64 points. Almost a point per game. Only a 78 there. Mete, Coglin, Chalowski, Samurikov. Again, Seth Jones finishes sixth. Isn't too bad. Goaltending stats. Jonathan Quick gets put in the AHL. I mean, I guess it makes sense because in game you'd have Leonard healthy, Logan Thompson healthy. So Quick goes to the AHL. And Chris Drieger's also there. They each had 34 wins. And I guess because our goalies split, they actually aren't going to be that high in wins. But save percentage wise, uh, we should have. Okay, yeah, Soderblom there. 0.922 is the fifth best. And then goals against for starters. Also Soderblom. So. And maybe we'll have the best goalie. And in terms of rookie scoring, you can see Eklund had almost a point per game there with 69. That's nice. So I was curious to see the NHL team's final record. So the Bruins are in the President's Trophy, which is obviously true to real life. And we finished with 30 points there. The Coyotes only had 18 more with an actual NHL team. So that's tough for them. San Jose, 69. The Coyotes should do better than 48 points. Like in real life, they're actually not doing that terrible, if we're being honest. Like they're playing in pretty close games. Like they went to overtime with Colorado. I think they went to overtime with Edmonton as well. But uh, like I was saying, guys, next year, let's get started with this AHL playoff. Sam, we got the Texas Stars first. Uh, quickly, I'll show you guys each, you know, AHL team. So they got Riley Tuff there as a 77. Looks to be their highest rated forward. Uh, let's see on D. They got Thomas Harley, Petrovic there. Um, in goal, they got Barube. Okay, so, I mean, they got a couple players, but obviously we are better on paper. So let's see what happens here. Just going to sim through these things uh, game by game. Maybe like the final if we make it will be period by period. So at home here, we win the first two games, lose one. Okay, so we beat Texas there in five. And this is kind of funny. We've actually got the Chicago Wolves here in the second round. Now the Chicago Wolves guys are actually the Carolina Hurricanes AHL team. I really feel like it should be Chicago Blackhawks. It just makes sense. But you guys can see they got Perlini there on the first line, a former Blackhawk, playing with Jack Drury, Stefan Nosen, uh, Dominic Bach, Ryan Suzuki, Dezingle. I mean, the top six there is pretty close to our top six, being a bunch of high 70s. Uh, defensively, Logison, Coglin wasn't too bad. Shaffield as well, actually played some NHL games this year. Lejoie, um, goaltending wise, of course, they got a healthy Anderson and Ranta. They got an 82 Kachikov in net. Their starting goalie is actually better than ours. So, ooh, we'll see what happens here. Athens, I just saw seven points in five games. So he had a good first round of the playoffs. First two games are at home, 2-1 OT win, 3-2 OT win. So yeah, Chicago's playing us tough. Um, we actually sweep them though. 3 2 OT win and a 4 3 win. So every single game was decided by one goal, three of which going to OT. So I feel like even though we swept, obviously the series was a lot closer than what a sweep would usually be. And now in the conference final here with the San Diego Gulls. And of course, this is Anaheim's AHL team. Uh, ben Olivier Gruel there is a 77. Chase DeLeo, Grimaldi, uh, Sakura is a 75. Tracy's a 77. Not sure why he's third line. Um, defensively, Ben Juan Anderson, all right. Same with Vakanainen. Benson Bolio, Oli Levy. So they got like some mid 70s. Luke Dossel, 79 starters, also pretty solid. So I feel like Chicago Bulls probably the slightly better team, but uh, obviously we'll see what happens here. Conference final, guys. We've got the home ice advantage throughout the entire playoffs. Lose the first game, but we do win the next one. So it's a 1 1 series, head to San Diego. Again, we take an L and a win, so we're all tied up here. Can we get the lead? We do. So we have to win one of these next two games to move on to the Calder Cup final. And wow, it actually went seven. We lost game six, and then we just won game seven. Two to one in OT. We're actually playing a Laval here. This, of course, is the Montreal Canadiens AHL team. Uh, they're currently 12 and eight in the playoffs. We're 12 and four. So 
Um, we'll see what Montreal's team's looking like. Athens you almost a point per game still. All right, guys, check out this team. You got Slavkovsky on the first line, up to a 79. Playing with Simino there, Yolanin. Uh, let's see, Mitchell Stevenson isn't too bad. Michael Pazita, fourth line center. He's literally playing that NHL right now. He's 77. He should be like first line center. He's the highest rated center there. Um, yeah, and Mysik also. Um, I don't understand. I guess because he's a grinder, that's why he's on the fourth line. Jack guy, they've got an AHL here too. Wideman, Madison Bowie. Okay, Norlander, Baron, goaltending wise. Kane Primo's their starter. I mean, this AHL team's got some players for sure. Obviously, a lot of these guys have gotten called up uh, from Montreal this year because they've been dealing with so many injuries. So we'll see here whether or not we can take them down. First game, of course, at home. We're down one. Yolanin, still down one. Wow, Yolanin gets two and we lose game one. All right, so we're definitely in for a series here. No sweep. Game two now, guys. Down four to two. Koski gets one, Blackwell and Bjork for us. Four to three, Blackwell adds another. Unfortunately, we lose. So we're down two nothing in this series. This is the first time in the playoffs we've been down two to nothing. Wow, and those two games were at home as well. So a couple of big away games here. Obviously have to win one or we're going home. And we're up two. There we go, Dickinson, Blackwell. Still two nothing lead. I'm shooting them 30 to 11. And yeah, we hold on there, get the shot out. I mean, end up more than doubling their shots. Then Edison period won a game four, guys, of course. Chance to tie here, 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, two to one, Martel, Jacki, Jones for us. There we go, Blackwell again ties it with a shorthanded goal. We need OT Hero here to tie the series up. And we get one, Lucas Reichel, I mentioned. Probably literally the best player on this team, talent-wise. Just hasn't, you know, fulfilled his potential quite yet. But those are two big wins, headed home now with the momentum. Can we get the lead here in game five? First period, up to nothing. Kara, Athanasiu, three to two. Kershev, Stevens, and Heineman for them. Three three. Martel ties it. Oh wow, four to three. Stevens again wins it for them in OT. So backs against the wall. We have to win the next two games, or we don't win this Calder Cup, which would be pretty crazy for an NHL team to fail. But uh, obviously, I'm sure Montreal fans are hoping we go down here. So game six, up to nothing. Jones, Athanasiu, two to one. They pull within one. I resume simulation, guys. We're halfway through. I'm just going to simulate the less, see what happens. Three to one. Okay, Dickinson adds the insurance goal. That might have been another shorthanded goal as well. So game seven. <laughs> I can't believe it came down to this. At home, can this team actually get it done, get the Calder Cup, prove even though they're the worst NHL team, the HL still nowhere close. Let's find out here, guys. Game seven, first period. And we're up two. Jones and Mitchell. Period two. We're up three now. Joey Anderson. All right, so just resume simulation there. Power play ended. Really low, sh okay, Pizzetta there, even on the fourth line gets it done. I was gonna say a very low shot game, uh, just under 20 here, halfway through the third period. Taylor Radish there, that might be it. Four to one, Jack High answers though. He says they're not done yet. Four to two, about five minutes left to go. Ian Mitchell though, five to two. That's gotta be it. Three, two, one, L 30 seconds left, up five to two. So this team, was able to get that Calder Cup, but I would say it was way too close. Also, guys, this is kind of funny. It shows Jonathan Taze there, even though he's scratched, so I'm not sure if he'd still, you know, come out to get the Calder Cup or whatever. Uh, I guess we'll find out here. And so with 30 seconds to go, guys, you can see we got the NHL team on the ice here. Should really be able to dominate them, although I noticed, I think this is like the third line, which honestly is pretty much an NHL line. It's all like 77s. Just go to the net. Again, this Laval team was actually like pretty solid, unfortunately for them. We put our NHL team in the AHL this year. Care there with the cross crease just to make sure we win this one. Connor Murphy on it, of course. Solid defensive defense. And I'm honestly surprised uh, they didn't try and trade him or maybe didn't get any offers. I feel like, you know, he'd be a good defenseman for the playoffs, especially. Just solid stay at home guys. Block shots well. Good in his own zone. But there you go, guys. Rockford Ice Hogs, aka Chicago Blackhawks, are able to win the Calder Cup. They're champions, even though, again, they're Captain Jonathan Taze. They still get it done. So, like I said, they show they are, you know, an NHL team. They're just uh, the worst of the 32 NHL teams. I can just imagine this handshake line, too. I feel like everyone in Laval would just be like, yeah, you guys cheat us out of the Calder Cup. Not even fair. Your, your GM sent down your entire NHL team. And there you have Jones lifting the Calder Cup. Um, I think that's Caleb Jones, because Seth Jones I gave an A to. And since Jonathan Taze is scratched, I actually thought he might still come out because he's scratched. Apparently not. And then, kind of weird, like when your captain scratched and alternate doesn't go get it, they just randomly picked Caleb Jones there. But uh, you guys can see this team lifting the Calder Cup. Very, very cool. And just like the Stanley Cup right here, you got the Calder Cup team pick. Again, the NHL team there. Uh, at least they got it done. If they didn't, that would have been embarrassing. And look at this, guys. A lot of results are in. Even after sending down our entire NHL team, we still lose out on Garmin Dart. The Sharks there dying from 3-1. to one. We did win the second overall pick, though, so we get Adam Fantilli. Uh, I guess it wasn't all for naught, but I feel like that's the hockey gods saying, you know what, you tried to cheat your way to Bedard. 
you're not getting him. Uh, Jerry Chinorti there is shown as the uh, highest scorer there in the playoffs, but obviously he wasn't. It's because like all of our NHL players are not showing up the NHL stat screen. It's sort of a bug, sort of not. But um, quickly, you guys will take a look at the awards. So we won the Calder Cup. Rangers actually won the Stanley Cup. Um, in terms of the team awards, of course, we won the regular season. We won our division. We won the conference. So. Uh, we cleaned up there. Individually, though, Rossi had the most points. But after see you got MVP. That's very cool. I didn't realize uh, Tynan there actually won back-to-back -back MVPs real life. Uh, Letary had the most goals. Eklund was the best rookie. Johansson, best defenseman. Drieger, the best goalie. Uh, Tyler Johnson, MVP of the playoffs. Rossi, sportsmanship. Edmondson, community involvement. That's kind of cool. And then Mrazik and Starvall actually shared lowest goals against there. But that's going to do it, guys, for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.